How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern with Jim Valley. Jim Valley needs a nickname of some sort. I'm going to come up with something. Anyway, we got a lot of news to get into today because it is Wednesday here on the show. And you know what that means. Well, we've got AW Dynamite tonight. Eight segments announced for the Dynamite show tonight, including men's tournament matches, women's tournament matches, championship matches, contract signings, victory speeches, and more. And the debut in the ring of Danhausen. So we have the lineup for the show coming up here tonight. We have an update on Charlotte Flair. Obviously, they're doing an injury angle with Charlotte. WWE has given an update as to when she'll be back. And the update is there is no update, of course. Yes, NXT 2.0. Everyone's favorite show, NXT 2.0. And if you are a fan of women's wrestling, boy, have I got a show for you. Every single match on NXT 2.0 involved a woman last night. They had the breakout tournament. They had mixed tags. They had Natty in the main event, so we'll tell you about that show here. We've also got the Raw rating for Monday night, which actually didn't do too bad, even though it was up against the NBA, which kills everybody. New Ring of Honor logo, Tony Khan talks about big events he's going to be running later on this year, including a return to Arthur Ashe Stadium and much, much more. If you want, text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, uh, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, we got an update on old Charlotte. WWE has announced a new storyline injury update on former SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. During this morning's episode of WWE's The Bump. It's The Bump again. I don't know anything about this show. Anyway, on The Bump, it was announced that Flair will be, quote, out of action indefinitely following her I Quit match against Ronda Rousey. So the update is... She's gone, and we don't know when she'll be back. Excellent got, update from you got that? WWE. Huh? You need to take notes? The huh? bump. I think we talked about that a couple of days ago. But, yes, she is leaving. She will be getting married to Andrade. They are going to have a honeymoon. They are going to... Uh, are you sure about that? Do yes. you have that confirmed? I'm positive. They said it. <laughs> They're going to do all of this stuff. Where are they going? I don't know. But they are going to do a honeymoon after they get married in Mexico this summer. And then, when they're done, she'll come back down the road. If you had to do your honeymoon all over again, would you? where would you go? Would you go to Hawaii again? Of course would we you would. Go? Of course. Okay. That's such a silly question. Dynamite tonight! And we've got a lot announced for the program. We have an Owen Hart Foundation men's tournament quarterfinal. Darby Allen versus Jeff Hardy. We have another quarterfinal, Adam Cole versus Dax Harwood. We have a women's quarterfinal, Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter. We have CM Punk and John Silver. We have Ricky Starks and Jungle Boy, Dan Housen and Tony Nese. MJF and Wardlow have a contract signing and the revealing stipulation and the Jericho Appreciation Society victory speech. And uh, they got this, this uh, Owen Hart tournament. And on NXT... They had the women's breakout tournament. <laughs> and I actually, I had somebody there tell me, oh, man, we're going to show up AEW. And I was like, no, you're not. And uh, they didn't. And I will say, we'll go over all of the, uh, we'll go over NXT 2.0 here in a while. But, uh, I mean, it's like, it's so WWE. Even if all of the women in the breakout tournament, like all of them, even if every single one of them was better than every single woman in AEW, it was still the thing that they do where you all have three minutes to do your matches. It's like, 
just a nothing happening breakout tournament, you know, three minutes choreographed matches. I mean, they weren't, there was nothing on the show that was like, you know, you, you, you want to laugh and, you know, show all of the spots on Botcha. I mean, there was nothing like that. They had Fit Finley there and he helped put all the matches together and, you know, green people choreographed matches. I mean, they were all fine, but they were three minutes. And you're never going to have a tournament that is going to be critically acclaimed and have people making comparisons to the Women's Owen Hart Cup tournament when you give them three minutes for every single match on the show. So that's my uh, overarching comparison there between these two companies. But Keep waiting and on Rosie not... and Jamal to come busting through and give somebody a splash the way you keep saying three minutes. But, that's what uh... it is. I mean, it's not It's not like, it's not even the women's breakout tournaments. Every tournament WWE does. It's like the, the quarterfinal matches or whatever, they're three-minute matches. Somebody run, like, why are you bothering to do a tournament if you don't let people have full, long, good matches and then advance in said tournament. It's just like it's pointless. So No, anyway, not true at all. Now you know everybody's age. We do know everybody's age. But then the other thing is like, they had every, you know, there were two breakout tur- I don't know how many breakout tur- I think there were like two or something like that. Yeah. But they do the matches, and then uh, one of the announcers, I think it was, uh, I don't know which one it was, but he's like, so and so is moving on to the quarterfinals. And then the other one goes, actually, it's the semifinals. <laughs> it's like, we're already in the semifinals. <laughs> uh, this is just for Roxy to win again, isn't it? That's what I'd like to think. No. You kidding me? <laughs> That's what I'd like to think. Well, I'd like this to think is... so, too, but let's look at the brackets here. <laughs> we have Lash Legend on one side. Legendary. Yes, and then we have, uh, you know, the Roar of the Tiger. Oh, Nikita? Nikita's on the other side. Only 22, by the way. So if you guys don't think it's going to go down to the same match again, I mean, it might not, but I am fully expecting. They're really going to do a best of seven. They're just going to do it over 14 weeks. I'm fully expecting that that's that's what the finals of this tournament are going to be. (laughs) Which, by the way, would mean that Lash Legend beats Roxy next week. Exactly. Will you stop it? I hate to believe this. It is so weird, this show, like, flip-flops. Like, now here you are expecting them to do the right thing, and I'm oh, trying to be the voice it. of reason. I'd like to hope, but I, I don't expect If it, I sat here and I, me. if I had started this show and I said, you know what, next week, Rock C is going to beat Lash Legend, you'd be like, brother, what are you talking about? You'd be trying to be the voice of reason. Well, you know this. It's true. It's true. More news, and we'll get into the uh, full review. We've got uh, raw ratings from Monday, 1.65 million viewers, 0.44. They went up against a bunch of uh, NBA games, 18 to 49, second lowest number of the year. Uh, They were up a little bit in viewers, and uh, that's that. I don't know what else to tell you about it. It's just those are the numbers. New trademarks filed for Ring of Honor. Did you see the new logo? No. You didn't? No. Let me find it right now. Here we go. Is Pop TV still in business or something like that? It is a black and white logo that says R O H. That's not that can't be it. I know it's on the website. It's on the front page of the wrestlingobserver.com right now and I'm looking at this and this was a logo that aired in the corner of a Me TV show in 1964 before color. It had to have. I don't I buy this at all. I was thinking that this was created on a Commodore 64. Hey, listen. Maybe maybe the idea of this Ring of Honor brand is is it's going to be black and white. You're going to have good guys, and you're going to have bad guys. It's going to be simple, straightforward, black and white pro wrestling, which if that's the case, perfect logo. If that's not the case, this is a very, very generic, boring logo. But that apparently is being trademarked, and we'll see what they're going to do. We don't know what they're going to do with the Ring of Honor. Are you looking at that thing right now? Does it even look like it's got sharp lines? If you look at it, it's like somebody, like a kid photoshopped it. Mm. Well, all like I know. The O, it's like, it looks like a worn tire or, you know, somebody had nibbled on the outside of a donut kind of going around it. It just doesn't even look, oh, uh, well. The feedback we've gotten for this logo is not positive. If you think I'm being negative, I'm actually being positive compared to some of the feedback we've got right here. Maybe it'll grow on me. It's just looking at it the first time, it doesn't look... 
It's just, it doesn't, it does, I honestly, God, it doesn't look real. Well, this Compared person to where here, we are with logos, it doesn't look real. This fella says, well, listen, they're trademarking the logo, not the color, so relax. Because the logo is going to be so much more exciting with a little bit well, of color. Why would you then put that out? Then just trademark it. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Why would you? Yeah. Well, this person says the last logo sucks, so anything is better. Color is not claimed as a feature of the logo. Mm, no. All right. What else do we got here? No love for the Amiga 500. ROH new logo looks as dead as the company. <laughs> Plenty of gray in that logo. Well, you know, what is gray? Gray is white and black. I don't think this is the new logo, this uh, DJ says. It's a mock-up slash stand-in. That's what it looks like. It's a sample, this person says. This is not the legit logo for Ring of Honor. <laughs> hey, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is what's on our front page. What do you want me to do about it? I didn't go to the trademark office. We'll see what the final logo looks like. But the one on the front page, not flattering. It's not. It's okay to say. Tony Khan says he expects to run AW Grand Slam Dynamite and Rampage from Arthur Ashe Stadium in 2022. He spoke to News 12, touted the success of the first Grand Slam in 2021, his belief that his second show will take place later this year, and uh, he says it was almost the first million-dollar gate in AEW history. Just came shy of that, but it was real close. We will be back, and I will hopefully it'll be another huge success back at Queens for AEW Grand Slam and later this year in 2022 again. Everyone's into these stadium shows. WWE's doing stadium shows. Anyway, back in a moment with everyone's favorite segment, NXT 2.0. Observer Live. Hey, the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. I can't believe the blowback to talk about NXT 2.0 sometimes. The show was last night on national television, for crying out loud, and you know, it wasn't that bad. There were two kidnappings, which <laughs> usually usually we're limited to one kidnapping every week, but this week we got two. Yeah. Although, well, to be anybody's fair... anybody's got an attitude about this, I'll go back to doing the review, and Brian won't be here for it, and then you're really going to be sad, so... So Shut up and deal with it. We had uh, we had a recap from uh, Spring Break In when Braun Breaker won, and then Druids kidnapped him. So technically there weren't two new kidnappings. This was a kidnapping from last week. So he got carried off in a barbed wire stretcher, and he's got a bag on his head, and he's being tortured by Joe Gacy. And then uh, Joe Gacy shows up to do a, a promo later, and uh, I have no idea where, you know, Braun Breaker is. He's just missing. He's missing, and uh, and that one guy that was with... Uh, anyway. So we had uh, JC Jane and Gigi Dolan versus Roxanne Perez and Wendy Chu in a non-title match, and, uh, and the champions won. So I'm not quite sure why they couldn't have just done a championship match. But, uh, you know, Roxy is, you know, the best worker on this team. I wouldn't say by miles because Wendy Chu is, is pretty good as well. But uh, Mandy Rose uh, is on the outside. She literally gets inside the ring in front of the referee for a brawl. Uh, this is not a DQ. And then uh, Dolan rolls up Perez and pins her. And then they uh, beat down and bully Wendy Chu afterwards. So the wrestling was, the wrestling was fine. Finish was beyond, far beyond preposterous. Brawling inside the ring. Not a DQ. We had Tiffany Stratton and Grayson Waller going shopping. I like this duo. They're great. Grayson yes. Waller and Tiffany Stratton are a great couple. And God knows we need couples because, you know, two of the uh, significant others just got fired. Creed brothers are upset. Roderick Strong interfered last week. They have a rematch next week against the Viking Raiders. They vow to do it right. Strong then announces that he's got a new member of the Diamond Mine, and it is Damon Kemp, whose name is... D he's, like, rattling off all of his, uh, his accolades, and then he announces him as Damon Kemp, which is not his real name. This is the brother of Gable Stevenson. So, you know, they could have used his actual name and promoted him as the brother of Olympian Gable Stevenson, but no, he's Damon Kemp, who's done some wrestling. So he's been that called may up be to the main better roster. for him in the long run, but we'll see. 
And we had the Joe Gacy interview. So uh, the Druids apparently are going to be unveiled as some people, but I don't know who. And uh, I'll tell you. Who is it? One of them is going to be Braun Breaker. You know it. Well, I know that. But I think that the idea is that these two guys are supposed to be new characters on the show, but I could be wrong. Hmm. We had a, a skit, the Ivy Nile Challenge, because we're all about strong young women on this show. And so she uh, goes to the Performance Center, and she's doing, like, all of this, you know, these exercises with these guys. And uh, one by one, they fall. And so she is the last person standing, does burpees and weighted pull-ups and all of this stuff. And she's the, she's the toughest person in the Performance Center is the, is the storyline. Then we add the tournament matches. Fallon Henley against Sloan Jacobs. It is impossible to say any of these names with a straight face. Fallon Henley won in about two minutes. And uh, yes, uh, the virgin, Brooks Jensen, was in fact out there at ringside wearing a t-shirt that read... Virginity rocks. It's... Yes. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with with maintaining your virginity and, until you're ready. I just, if I was in my professional place of employment, being pro wrestling of all things, I don't know if I'm walking around in a virginity rock shirt. Even AC Green didn't walk around in a virginity rock shirt. I don't think. Team Tebow? No, he never did that either. You're kind of uh, to hell with it. We had a Santos Escobar skit with uh, Tony D'Angelo. AJ Galante, of course, got kidnapped last week. And literally, Santos Escobar, AJ Galante has never been seen again after he got kidnapped. And Santos Escobar, flat out on national television, suggests he'll never walk again. We smashed his legs beyond recognition. And so then uh, Tony D'Angelo, he tells uh, uh, Del Toro, Benicio mm-hmm. Del Toro, to go and start the car. But uh, Tony D'Angelo and his, his, uh, his buddies attack the bull, and they put him in the trunk. So now he will never walk again. Or worse. Elbow fire! Face to Mari Miller. They had about two minutes, and she beat her, and that was the match. Corjade is setting up her inner her match with uh, Natty later. Then we had Solo Sokoa coming down to the ring, and uh, God bless this guy. He does not have the charisma of the Usos. He's struggling his way through this interview. And uh, Grimes comes out. He's a North American champion. Hayes and Williams come out, and essentially at the next uh, in your house, whatever they call it, which they have not announced, but it's June 4th. They don't bother to tell you that on television. Uh, it will be Cameron Grimes defending the title against uh, Carmelo Hayes. And Grimes has vowed if he wins, Solo Sokoa will get the next shot. So that's your lineup. Then we had a, a uh, I would actually call this a mini movie with uh, Santos Escobar on the phone with Tony D'Angelo. And they're trying to negotiate the freedom of their respective partners, uh, one of whom can no longer walk again, apparently. And the other, he may have been, uh, you know, put through a wood chipper. We don't know. But here's what I'm going to say about this. And I, I hesitate. horribly acted. I hesitate. <laughs> no, I thought it was actually pretty good. Oh, and, I, and I hesitate to say this because uh, I don't want to get, you know, this is a weird company, okay? I'm pretty sure that Jeremy Borash shot and produced all of these vignettes. I don't know for sure, but like, you know, I'm pretty sure. And I don't want to, I hesitate to put him over because I don't want him to get fired. But like the production of these skits, whatever you want to say about the acting or whatever, but like the production of these mini movies, it's like miles, miles above anything you'll get on Raw or SmackDown on the main roster. And like in a normal company, He'd be, like, called up to the main roster to do this stuff there. But this is WWE, so, you know, if you, I don't want to put him over too much because they may just fire him. But anyway, the production was very, very good. And I thought everybody played their roles well. I thought this was well done. I don't know what's going on, but I thought it was well done. Apparently they're going to do, like, a switch or something. 
We had this poor Nathan Frazier, this bloke. Oh, my Lord. He's such a geek. His character is such a geek. And uh, he's interrupted by Zion Quinn, who is a total jerk. And uh, they're going to have a match. It's, I think it's going to be him and Zion Quinn and Wes Lee first. And then, uh, and then you know, Nathan Frazier next. They might, for all I know, be putting Wes Lee and Nathan Frazier together as the new MSK. They should. Which Nathan Frazier is so wacky that it actually, I think, would work. Yes. So I think this would be a good pairing. And look, we know Wes can cut a promo right now. Frazier can't, you know, at least believably and come across, but he can move. That's one thing he can do. And those guys together, it would be fun. And they need teams anyway. It would be the best thing for them both, I think, right now. Then we had Sarai and Andre Chase versus Tiffany Stratton and Grayson Waller in a mixed tag. Dude, the fans were super into this match. And it was a fun match. And the best character in all of NXT 2.0 by Miles is Bodie Hayward. Bodie. <laughs> this guy's awesome. And he's got a great NXT name. And they had a fun match, and uh, Stratton... You're burying the lead of him coming out for the, the, he came the out, whole deal. Well, we'll get to that after a while. It's going to take a while. <laughs> I want to finish this review. But anyway, uh, Sarai rolled up Stratton and got the win, and uh, they called it an upset, even though I think Stratton's had four matches in her entire career. And the fans went crazy for the finish, and this was this was a fun segment. Ikamanjiro is back. And he attacked uh, Von Wagner, so they're going to continue that storyline. Toxic Attraction played Mean Girls to poor Indy Hartwell. They can't say what happened other than her man is gone. And then, of course, you know, they're talking about, oh, my man would never leave me. I only leave my men. And they call her a nerd and leave and everything like that. Nikita Lyons beat Ariana Grace in three minutes. And now Nikita Lyons will... Move on to face Fallon Henley in the next round. And that was that. Then the main event was Natty and Cora Jade. So here's the whole feud. Cora Jade and Natty do a promo. Cora Jade is fawning all over her. She's the biggest mark for Natty. Natty puts over the locker room and everybody. And then she attacks and beats up Cora Jade because she's a heel. This leads to Natty doing a couple of matches in NXT. And then out of the blue on social media, they announced, hey, we're doing Natty and Cora Jade this week. They do the match. It's a good match. And then uh, Natty beats her with the sharpshooter. And then when the match is over, Natty turns babyface and hugs her again. And I think she's out of here. So Cora Jade never even got a win over Natty. Although I will say, Lade was a good match. Cora Jade is better after the match. I don't think it's the end of the world that Natty beat her in a really good match. Certainly, Cora J did not come out of this looking like a geek. So that's like an improvement. And uh, that was the end of the show. So as far as NXT 2.0 goes, a much better show than usual. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dude, this Bodie Hayward is going to be a huge star. He is. You want to know why? Why? I don't know if he'll like be a main eventer, but he's gonna like make a lot of money for a long time in WWE, because he's one of those guys where it doesn't matter what you give him, he's gonna do it. He's gonna be great, because they they had the match last night, and uh, Sarai's gimmick is that she dresses like a schoolgirl in real life, but then when she goes through the smoke of the entrance, she magically transforms into her gear. Okay. So uh, you've got Sarai, Andre Chase, and Bodie Hayward, and they're all in the backstage area. And they start walking like they're heading to the ring. And uh, Bodie goes, is she going to wrestle in that? And uh, Andre goes, I don't know. Let's go. And so they all start walking. And they all go through the mist. And Sarai comes out in her gear. And all of a sudden, Bodie Hayward has been transformed into a cheerleader. Okay? I know some of you are listening to this going, this is stupid. Well, it is stupid, but Bodie Hayward made this work. This yeah. guy's got this wig on, and he's got this this outfit on, and bro, he's going, he's giving it 150%. The glasses? Don't forget he's about the glasses. He's just dancing, <laughs> and he's having so much fun, and he's got the biggest smile on his face, and I'm like, bro, this is one of those guys that Vince is just going to love him. He's going to be like, you know, you're going to dress as this today, or you're going to do this stupid thing, and Bodie Hayward's going to go, all right, brother, and he's going to do it with a smile. And uh, he's going to make a lot of money. 
I don't know if he'll ever headline a WrestleMania or anything like that, but this guy's going to make a lot of money for Vince McMahon because well, he he's looks, right up Vince's alley. Yeah, he looks like a cartoon character. He's got those features. Remember when he got beat up and he had like the big black eye and all that sort of stuff and he had to sell it with the big sad face? I mean, he's just got a very, uh, you know, car- again, cartoonish, very, you know, <laughs> a hell of a face and and just again you're like you mentioned especially standing next to andre chase too because of the character that he's playing you know as being so straight laced with the you know the sweater on and all that sort of stuff to have this goofball right next to him bouncing around hilarious and you know the the one the thing about him being able to understand saray because that's how they set up the match i didn't really understand why saray was so upset i guess i missed something during the deal with with grayson waller and with Tiffany Stratton that really made Saray upset, but she said she was just those people drive her nuts. She hates them. She wants to have a mixed tag match with them, and she's trying to talk to Andre. He has no idea what what she's talking about because you know she's speaking Japanese. But because Bodhi is taking that Japanese course, uh, that language class, you know, from whatever time to whatever time, he knows what he's uh, what she's talking about. So the whole thing, it was so cheap. It was very pro wrestling, but sometimes the cheapest stuff in pro wrestling is really funny when it's done well. The other thing about Sarai, and it's the same thing with Asuka, is uh, we, were, we were doing a Landstorm Q&A yesterday, and the question came up, you know, why, you know, I think someone was like, we, I got I got friends who are younger, and they'll watch AEW, but they won't watch WWE. Why? And, you know, there's a million reasons why one would choose one over the other. But one is just how absolutely fake all of the verbiage is in WWE. I mean, not everybody. I mean, there's a lot of great promos in AEW, but even, like, the bad promos are still better than the WWE promos because it just sounds like a human being cutting a bad promo as opposed to somebody reading these stupid words. And uh, the thing with Asuka and Sarai is they both will cut promos in Japanese. And their promos in Japanese are, like, miles better than... (laughs) And I don't even know what they're saying. But, man, Sarai cutting that promo in Japanese just absolutely blew away any other promo on this show, practically. Although I really like Santos Escobar. He's really good. But... God, that whole again, that whole act should be on the main roster. We'll see if Tony D'Angelo and his crew makes it up there first. I can absolutely see that, but I just don't know. When you look at Cruz del Toro and you look, I just all of, I mean, everybody, how they're not on the main roster, why they're not in the mix for tag team championships, and why Santos. Look, I don't know size wise, he's never going to be a world champion. I, you know, in Vince's eyes, maybe he will be. Everybody seems to get a crack at the belt at some point, but. You know, him in the mix for trying to make the U.S. or the I.C. title something again, you know, having him in there with his crew is a new breath of fresh air. I just don't understand why. And I get it. That What's her name? Um, who's with him? The uh, the woman that's with him. Not Carmen. Um, what is her name? Brian. Who are you talking about? The woman with uh, Legato. <laughs> Dude, we've been trying... Oh, I thought you were talking about uh, the the mystery woman. No. The mystery woman that keeps showing up with Robert Stone, who, by the way, ever since she showed up in the crowd going like this, we haven't seen her again. (laughs) We haven't. She vanished. I think her head fell off. She was bobbling it like this so vigorously that she woke up the next day and her head fell off. Thank you, Omega Man. Electra Lopez. Electra Lopez. They can all be on the main roster as long as they don't bring her up to the main roster and give her a gimmick where she's Sophia just... Cromwell. Yeah, Sophia. Sophia. Didn't she become somebody else? No. Who was that? No, that was someone else in the breakout tournament. Don't get it? into this, Mike, because people get so mad when you don't know every single solitary detail about NXT 2.0. Mm. Somehow it's our fault. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a Muppet show. It's the Muppet Show to get you ready for the big Muppet Show on on Monday nights. Hey, Juice oh, Robinson, man. by the way, revealed that he signed a contract extension with New Japan. I'm keeping the details private, he said, but I am here where I'm supposed to be. I don't want to work somewhere else. I was about to, and I was ready to, but I didn't want to. New Japan is where I belong. So, in fact, he did re-sign because his contract was up at the end of April. Now he's back. 
It's amazing how two things can be true. It is. And if you're smart about it, you can navigate those waters very, very well. I think he did that. We've also got a Rampage time slot change. Rampage will continue to air in different time slots the next two weeks. For the second straight week, Friday will be 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern due to the NHL playoffs. And the following Friday, Rampage will air at 7 Eastern. 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning? Might as well. What are you talking about? Tony kind of announced the news (laughs) on Friday. Average uh, 292,000 viewers at 2.30 Pacific. And uh, what was what was ironic, which in a lot of these uh, stand up for WWE blokes don't mention, is the the powerful, the mighty NBA aired in their rampage time slot Friday night at uh, ten Eastern, and uh, did the same numbers Rampage does in that time slot. Mm. It almost seems like the time slot. The competition trumps all else, doesn't it? It does. Because that's the case. Mm Mm-hmm. Sprazier says, just like Braun Breaker, Solo Sokoa, and Damon Kemp, nobody is going to recognize who Santino Morella's daughter is in the women's breakout tournament. This drives me mad, says Ariana Grande, what was her name? Not grande, but she wasn't Ariana. <laughs> you don't know what it is either. Ariana something. <laughs> it's not Morella, which is the problem. I don't... Mm. Uh. So Nettie turned babyface on NXT and will be a 100% unapologetic heel on SmackDown on Friday tagging with Shayna Baszler. Yes. Things are different in the NXT universe, okay? She Actually. gave her hug, everything's fine, goodbye, and... She doesn't want to give a hug to Naomi and Sasha. So there you go. A lot of people talking about the logo. The logo is not final. Look at all the old trademark logos for AEW. Well, we'll see the logo when it's done, right? I was gonna say, did we have AEW logos thrown in front of our eyes for us to choose upon? I don't even remember seeing the, uh, the mock-ups for AEW logos. This person here says, Sarai and Chase U was incredible. They need to see Sarai team with more people to get more transformation gimmicks. Well, let's not uh, let's not ruin something here by uh, doing it too much. Every once in a while. Let's see. To spoil the eventual punchline, Xavier Woods once jokingly said years ago, on an up, up, down, down live stream. One of his goals in wrestling was to get the small package over as his move and build to doing it off the top rope so that the announcers have to call it the big package. Well, they'll they're, they'll call it the super small package. Super package. Well, that's... The super small package. <laughs> the super small so the, package. So the joke's going to be on him at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> the other problem is they don't even call it a small package. They call it the backwoods. So they would call it like a super backwoods. You ever smoke a super backwoods? Probably not. I would be willing to bet money that Dewdrop is going to be in a superhero costume as opposed to Nikki dropping hers. God, I hope not. No, and I can see Vince wanting to do that, but no. I mean, I thought that Dewdrop outfit that she had at the very beginning was a little much. But, you know, the shiny one, I just make them a serious team. Have Dewdrop smack Nikki, get her out of this stupid outfit, and have them go. And that was the other thing, too, with turning Lacey Evans heel. You didn't need to do that. You know, when you look at that roster and it's like... You don't say. I know, I know. But when you look at the roster, it's like Sonya Deville, and obviously she's not going to be a threat, but like Becky Lynch... Rhea Ripley, who you just turned, and you have Dewdrop there who can have good matches with everybody. She can be that third heel. Why they needed to have, and maybe it's because Alexa Bliss came back. That's one of the reasons they may have pushed it the other way. But, I mean, to me, it's nuts to even have Lacey Evans come back as a heel when you have Dewdrop there who you can actually utilize pretty well. Spurson believes Cody has to be winning the U.S. title on July 4th. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's see. 
NBA was on ESPN at 10, did 4.5 million. NHL was on TNT at 10, did 483. Yeah. NHL! Not the NBA. <laughs> Still, it was in the same time slot on the same channel. It did the same number. What does that tell you? Dying over here still. You don't care. Dude, I died for a week straight. I didn't hear one thing out of you. But the recent That's because news... you didn't listen to the show that I had to do solo on one minute's notice because, bro, I can't do this today. I'm out of I, here. I didn't say I couldn't. I said, so, yeah, you, you want to do the you... show? Yeah, <laughs> Brother, this doesn't work for me. You know, why, you know why I gave that show up that one day? Because normally... Like, I get sick and then I get well. And I felt horrible that day. And I thought, God, you know what? I'll just wake up the next day and I'll be good to go. I woke up the next day and it felt horrible. That's, yeah. So that's like, like ah, you wait for I'll this just, to go away. I'll it just will not going. go away. Dude, it went It went on forever. Oh. Well over a week. Fantastic. And I still have a little bit of... And how did you get it? You're across the country. I don't know. But I got to go to see New Japan on Saturday in D.C. And I'm not trying to be getting people sick and whatnot. Jeez. Uh, is the fact that Corey did not tap out, but instead passed out of the sharpshooter really a big deal? I feel like a loss is a loss either way you cut it. Well, y- listen, in WWE, to their crowd, it is much better to pass out than to submit. Is that canon? So, I mean, it is canon. That's what people expect. So, yeah. Hey, look, Austin and, and Brett, until that is removed from everybody's minds and it goes somewhere else. Like that's, that's the honorable way to go out. It's not the smart way to go out as we know from real fighting, but it is the honorable way in wrestling to go out. So until that changes, until that tide turns, it it does make sense. I'm good with it. Four two five seven eight zero seven five six six is the phone number. If you want to text us four two five (laughs) or not back in a moment for wrestling observer live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Spur says, I don't find it believable somebody would pass out due to a sharpshooter. Now, Mox versus Yuta is much more believable to me. Well, listen, what is what is believable, okay? Pro wrestling is just what it is. I mean, there, there, are, there are internal rules to pro wrestling. Well, you get put through a table? That's way better than getting slammed on the actual floor. In real life, if you're outside in the cement and your options are get powerbombed on the cement by Valter or get powerbombed through a table to the cement, bro, go through that table. You're way better off. But in the world of pro wrestling, it's much worse to be put through a table. In pro wrestling, if you are thrown into those ropes, you bounce back. That would never happen in real life. In real life, I've seen blokes picked up and dropped on their heads and hop right back up and kill dudes. Emilianenko, years ago. In pro wrestling, yeah. you land on your head and you're almost dead. Now, granted, most people landing on their head would be almost dead. But point is, there's rules. There's rules that you must accept when you watch pro wrestling. And one of them is, if you're put in a submission hold, it can hurt so bad that you will lose consciousness. And fans accept that. So if the fans accept it, to me, it's okay. If the fans don't accept it, Obviously, it's not okay. And they accept the idea of passing out in a submission hold. Look, we're still working on, you know, the research of musical paralysis that wrestlers suffer every time theme music hits and they stare and somebody's coming out to kill them and they can't get out of a ring that they have four sides to get out of. We're still trying to work on that and trying to solve that in the wrestling community for these poor wrestlers that are stuck, paralyzed when theme music hits. Go blow your nose, brother. I'm trying, brother. We're out of time. I want to thank you all for listening. Top tier YouTube subscribers, Twitch homies. Back later on tonight with Dave, AEW, and NXT. Check out the Brian Vinny show last night. Raw 21. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.